It might not look like much yet, but this is my six month curly girl method check-in. Technically, I've been following the curly girl method since last year, 2018, August. So that would be August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Technically, it's my seven month check-in, but I'm finally getting to it anyway, so. So for the last couple of days, I have actually been heat styling my hair. I know, I know, definitely not my choice. But last year I decided to help out my boyfriend's friends and act in a short film that they were making. And then this year, almost exactly a year later, they needed to do some pickup shots. And last year I hadn't started Curly Girl Method yet. So I had to curl my hair to match the way that it looked last year. I also had the Kids' Choice Awards this weekend. And so all in all, I ended up heat styling my hair a bunch this weekend, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. I recently cut a bunch of length off of my hair. It had gotten down pretty far, like almost to the small of my waist. Actually, in my back, it kind of grazed to the top of my butt. And I cut it all off pretty short for me. Changing the length hasn't made a huge difference in the actual curl type I have, but I still think it was fun. And I feel like I'm starting with kind of a more fresh base now. Now again, my job means that I don't have a ton of control over what I look like when it comes to work. Luckily this year they actually let me incorporate my own natural hair texture into some of Samantha's hairstyles so that I didn't have to heat style it on a regular basis on set. So that was kind of cool actually. There are also products that you get used in my hair on set that don't necessarily fall under Curly Girl Method approved hairstyle products. Although again, the show actually did an awesome job this year. Our hair team did a great job with listening to me and knowing what works for my hair and having products available to me that were Curly Girl Method approved. Here or there, of course, there are days when that doesn't work out. But other than that, there have been a lot of other things like promotional stuff that we've done for Cobra Kai, photo shoots, interviews, red carpet events, and things like that where my hair has not been in my control necessarily. I feel like I've been doing a pretty good job of following the Curly Girl Method up to this point, other than a few days here or there where, I mean, I just can't do anything about it. All of this to say, this weekend my hair has been heat styled a bunch and I've had a bunch of product in it that aren't great for the health of my hair. So here's what we're working with. Ew. Today I am going to need to do some major repair on this hair as it has been heat styled out of its natural curl pattern, not even washed or cared for in a few days. So I'm gonna have to do some major repair on this. Today I'm going to do my like in-depth, let's do everything we can to help the health of our hair breakdown. On average, I've been doing a shampoo day and then a couple days later I co-wash, a couple days later I co-wash, a couple days later I shampoo again. Always with the sulfate-free shampoo. And for most of the time I've been putting masks on my hair because it started to get really like frizzy and I just haven't liked it. And I think I realized a couple days ago that maybe that's part of the problem. I've been weighing my hair down with so much product that the curl's not popping up as so much anymore and it might be actually contributing to the frizz. So I guess let's go see what we can do to fix this up. Welcome to my shower where I have purchased an excessive shower caddy because of how many curly hair products I have purchased at this point. So I guess I'm going to talk you through my routine. First thing I'm going to use is the Diva Curl Build Up Buster. So this is a micellar cleansing water for your hair, which I had never heard of before, but I mean, it's kind of genius. So it doesn't use any sulfates to cleanse your hair, but it's a deeper cleanse than the sulfate-free shampoo I've been using. So this is what I'm gonna use to get out all the gunk and dry shampoo and producty crap that's been building up in my hair for a bit. So let's get started. I use the nozzle tip to distribute this product throughout my hair every inch or so across the top of my head. And then I do a good squirt over the back of my head, the top of my head, and the ends of my hair. I use this shampoo scrubber brush to really get in there good. And though it might look like I'm going pretty vigorous, I'm actually being as gentle as I can be while making sure that I dig really well into my scalp. Okay, so next step, now that I've rinsed all of that out of my hair, is to use the Lopu Delights. I don't think you actually have to use a shampoo after you use that cleanser, but I like to just to make sure I got everything really, really well. This isn't the only sulfate-free shampoo that I've been using, though. I also recently picked up the Pacifica Pineapple Curls line. I could do a whole video talking just about this alone because it's been like 
awesome. I freaking love it. It's now my like, new favorite shampoo and conditioner set to use. Um, I also picked up the Not Your Mother's Curl Talk line. I like that one a lot. I haven't used it a ton yet, so I don't feel like I can give like a full opinion on it, but I really like it and it works. This one is my favorite smell ever. Anything that is banana or vanilla scented, I have to pick it up. I'm obsessed with vanilla smell and like a little bit of coconut, but this one is the Vanilla Bean from Maui Moisture. I'm obsessed with how this stuff smells. And it actually works pretty well too. It's like a really thick shampoo and a pretty thick conditioner, so I don't have to use a ton of either product, which I like a lot. I've also just been co-washing, as I said, and that one I used the As I Am Coconut Co-Wash, the same co-wash that I was using when I first started this six or seven months ago, and it's still been working great, so I use that as my co-wash, and I really only do the full-on shampoo thing every, like, third wash. So, since this is my repair day, next up will be the Loku Delight. So I use a decent-sized glob in my hand, then I just kind of lather it pretty gently again. It looks crazy because it's in fast motion, but pretty gently throughout my scalp. Trying not to get it on the ends of my hair since your hair really doesn't actually need that to get clean. Okay, so that's all done. Uh, next up, I'm going to use the One Condition Delight conditioner just because I really like to keep with a theme since I started with Diva Curl. I'm going to use Diva Curl as much as I can. So the One Condition Delight's a pretty light conditioner, but that doesn't bother me since I'm going to be doing masks on my hair today. I distribute it throughout the middle and ends of my hair and then use this really wide tooth comb to comb through it. On a really good day, I can actually use my fingers to comb through my hair, but since it's been such a matted mess, it's not even worth it. I cup my hair in my hand when I put it underneath the water to protect the curls from getting totally stretched out while the water runs over it and then I do a little squish here at the end. Okay, so next up I'm going to mask my hair. These are the two masks I have been using from the beginning on India Batson's suggestion and I am going to keep on using them. I love how they work and I love how they smell and how they make my hair feel. They're awesome. So it's Diva Curls Melt Into Moisture and Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Yogurt. So I'll get onto that now. So I use a little bit of the Manuka Honey Protein Mask just on the roots of my hair and then I mix the other two at about a half and half ratio and distribute that all throughout the ends of my hair and a little bit over the top of my head as well. And then I do a little squish to condition here. I put it all inside the shower cap. And now excuse me while I finish my shower. One eternity later. All right, so about 15 minutes has passed. My shower didn't take that whole time, so I ended up just like sitting here for a little while, but that's fine. I'm going to flip my head upside down, take this off very gently under running lukewarm to cold water, and I squish and squish and squish as it's rinsing to kind of like get all of the excess mask out. Let me see if I can get some kind of angle where you can see what I'm doing. So I've been trying not to squish my hair too much since it seems to create frizz, but I just like to get as much of the product out as it needs to not be so weighed down. Okay, and while I'm here, I'm going to apply all of my products upside down. <laughs> So for each product, I'm doing the praying hands method first to distribute it onto the majority of my hair. And then I squish to reestablish the curl pattern and to really kind of get it into all the spots that you can't reach from just doing the praying hands. And now I'm about to plop with a big old t-shirt. I'll leave a link to a video on plopping since I did not give a great explanation of it here. And isn't this a look? <laughs> this is how I sleep. If I sleep with wet hair, I sleep with it in a plop. Tuck the little sleeves up in there. And if I'm not sleeping on my wet hair, then I just leave it like this for like 10, 15, sometimes even like 20 minutes. Just let it kind of soak up the excess water and keep it from just dripping all over me as I get dressed and ready, maybe do my makeup. And after whatever amount of time, I take this down and I clip it, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so it's been a little bit and I've decided I'm going to take the plop out now and go ahead and pin it with some of these little silver clips. I don't think these are the Diva brand. I think I just got these at a local beauty supply store, but they've been working great. I love them. Ah, <sighs> fresh curls. Feels so good to have them back. Okay, so I use about six clips and I'm gonna have to use the viewfinder here as my mirror. First, I find my part just somewhere around there, just slightly off to the side. Then I reach in and grab a section here on each side, a section here on each side, and a section in the back on each side. I usually do the middle part first. And this is just to give me, I know I look silly, this is just to give me a little bit of lift as it's drying so that my hair doesn't dry flat to my head, thus giving me volume. 
The one in the front here, I have to be really careful to grab a curl where it's bending so that when I unclip it, it doesn't look like it goes like curl and then flat right where the clip was. I used to do more of the Medusa clipping style, but this one's just been the easiest to keep up with for me. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry while I eat dinner and do some schoolwork and things like that, and I will check back with you when it is all dry so we can see the end results and see if maybe I salvaged a bit of the damage. And here we are, about five hours later. <laughs> My hair is almost all the way dry, and honestly, it's two o'clock in the morning. This is as close to dry as it's gonna get. I wanna go to bed. I have class tomorrow. So as you can tell, there's like still a little bit of dampness to it, but what I would do if my hair was entirely dry is I would scrunch out the crunch. So I would just go through, scrunch out whatever kind of crunchiness the gel left behind. The light defining gel doesn't leave much of a crunch, but the Cantu gel does leave a little bit of crunch. I've been mixing just a little bit of the Cantu gel into the light defining gel because I feel like it gives me a better hold. And it also helps protect your style against humidity, which I definitely need as I've been traveling a bunch. My hair is super prone to humidity and it's been super rainy outside. So this is kind of the finished product. This is where I'm at for six months of Curly Girl Method hair. It's crazy the difference. Looking at the before picture and the after picture. This hair had been heat styled every single day, dyed, brushed out every single day, brushed out dry. All these things that are just complete curly hair sins that I did not realize I was committing. When I washed my hair, I washed it almost every single day with a shampoo that had sulfates. And I would lather it up, rinse, and then lather my hair again and rinse again. All under scalding hot water. All of these curly hair sins. I could make a whole video just on curly hair sins that I didn't realize I was committing. This hair needed a lot of TLC, but... This hair has been so fun. I enjoy everything I've learned about my hair now. I enjoy showing it off. I love answering people's questions. I love telling them all about my curly hair journey when they're like, holy crap, I didn't realize you had curly hair. And I'm like, me either. It's been super fun to experiment with new products, with new techniques, things that I've been learning. There are a few things that have become my tried and true, like staple things I do all the time. And there's some things that I'm still experimenting with and learning as I go. If you guys want to see a video of all of my tried and true, like, ride or die products and stylers and tools and things like that leave a comment down below I am super down to do that video I've definitely learned a lot this hair right here is what I consider wash and go now this might seem like a lot of extra work in comparison to my old shower routine which was shampoo rinse shampoo rinse condition just a little bit rinse it out comb it when I got out of the shower and move on. But that hair was definitely not something I could just walk out of the door with. I either had to put it up, I had to style it somehow, and most days I ended up being blow drying it and then curling it with a curling iron almost every single day. This hair, on the other hand, wash days happen, and then for the next like couple of days, you can just throw my hair up in a pineapple, and then the second day just kind of like twist the front pieces back that have kind of gone flat, and I still have wearable hair the next day. I have kind of found my ways to cheat around it, to make the most of every single single wash day. I am really proud of this result. I am proud of everything I've learned. I definitely have a long way still to go. I hope that the more I treat my hair properly, the longer that I take care of it, the more I kind of see it embracing its own natural pattern and maybe it holds on to itself a little bit better over time. But even if it stays just the way it is, I am so happy. I love it. I can't wait to do more videos and tell you guys more things I've learned about the Curly Girl Method and about all of these products. But here's my six month update. Here's my before and after. And here's my hair. So like my always hairstyle is taking I'm gonna have to use the viewfinder again as a mirror. This little piece here, clipping it, and then making a little crisscross pattern with the bobby pins. That piece there, and then I like to leave a little piece down by my face, and then I pull this side back and do the same kind of thing. I'm a pretty low maintenance girl, and to me, this is super low maintenance approved. This takes me two seconds to do, and then I have a hairstyle that I can wear multiple days in a row. And then it's also fun to experiment with all kinds of little things you can add to it. Like I really enjoy doing, you know, pieces of braids or like doing these little buns with all this texture I have. I feel like it adds so much. I used to hate putting my hair up in a ponytail because I felt like it was just so flat to my head. I really love how ponytails look now with all of this like texture and bumps and all that kind of stuff all up in there. I have had a blast learning everything I have up to this point and I can't wait to see what else I learn. If you guys have any curly girl method or wavy hair tips, 
leave them down below because I'm still really loving learning everything I can about this whole process. If you guys have done the curly girl method or have started it or are thinking about starting it, definitely comment down below. Tell me about your curly hair journey. I would love to see pictures, your before and afters and things like that. So comment down below and tag me in your pictures on social media and I can't wait to check back in with you guys and who knows what six months from now is going to look like. I know I look a little silly, but you know what? This is gonna take care of my curls for the night, and that's all I care about.